You remember a cartoon called Fire Dogs? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Anyways, that's a cheater cartoon. So let me tell you what cheater cartoons are. Um, most of the old classic uh, studios, like Warner Brothers and MGM, Disney, they would do a certain amount of, um, you know, A cartoons, and then they would do some B cartoons that they could do fast just to, so that they could meet the deadlines and stuff. But, like Chuck Jones would make Roadrunner cartoons and Pepe Le Pew, which were kind of cheater cartoons, so he could make his amazing cartoons like Feed the Kitty or the Dover Boys, sort of one-shot cartoons. Well, we were strapped for time, and we were getting to the end of our uh, story schedule, and we were short a couple of cartoons. So I sat down and said, what? I'm just going to make them firemen or something, or I'll make them fire dogs. They'll be um, Dalmatians. So I wrote, a, I wrote the cartoon in about an hour or something like that, and then we just put it through production. And I figured everyone would get mad at me, but people turned out to sort of like the cartoon, in part, partly because of uh, the fire chief character. The fire chief character is, was loosely based on my old, ba my old boss, Ralph Bakshi. Uh, Ralph Bakshi, if you don't already know, I mean, you should know, because he's a very, very famous giant of a cartoonist. He basically pioneered uh, um, adult cartoons in the, uh, in the uh, 1970s with Fritz the Cat, Heavy Traffic, Coon Skin, and he also did uh, some of the first you know, modern fantasy cartoons. He did Lord of the Rings, he did Wizards. He was very popular and very influential in the 1970s. He basically owned the 1970s in movies, animated movies. Well, he retired early in the 80s and um, then decided to come back about the mid-80s and he called me up and said, Hey, Johnny, I'm going to start a TV studio. I'm going to do stuff for uh, Saturday morning cartoons. And I'm thinking to myself, Ralph Bakshi and Saturday morning cartoons? Here's a guy made X-rated cartoons. I said, All right, Ralph, come on over. We'll do it. So he shows up in Hollywood. He's from New York. And he wakes me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Come on, Johnny, let's get to work. So he, he makes a deal right away with CBS, ABC, and NBC to develop something like five different cartoon uh, series each. And then at the end of the summer, they would look at them and decide if they wanted to put any of them into production. So Ralph and I and Lynn Naylor and uh, Tom Minton and Jim Reardon and some other people, Dave Spafford, we spent the summer developing uh, original Saturday morning cartoon ideas to pitch. Now the problem is, back in the 80s, when we were doing this, there was no such thing as an original cartoon on Saturday morning. All the cartoons on Saturday morning TV were based on pre-existing properties. They called it uh, marquee value, which meant you could do the new adventures of Mighty Mouse, you could do the new adventures of the Jetsons, you could do, you know, the, you could do He-Man, you could do toy cartoons based on toys. But the way the networks thought was, if you had a character that no one's ever seen before, the kids wouldn't know who it was and they wouldn't watch it which is crazy to me, because obviously every character is invented at some point. Bugs Bunny you know, had a first cartoon or something, but that's the 80s. So Ralph and I develop all these shows, they all get rejected. So by the time he went to the third network to get rejected, that was CBS, he's really mad. And this is this huge guy, right? He's six foot three, um, probably weighs 250 pounds or something. He's super strong. I've seen him pick up desks and throw them. He's a scary man, right? So he's in there screaming and pounding the desk. You guys just like, you only gave us this money to, to have, so that the other studios couldn't buy the, co the cartoons from us. He's having this big fit, and they're all terrified. All the executives are like, oh, please, Ralph, calm down. So Judy Price, who's the main executive, she says to Ralph, listen, Ralph, calm down. Honestly, here's the situation. We can't buy characters that are brand new. But if you had a character that was a pre-existing character that had marquee value, we buy that from you, promise. We promise, we love you, Ralph. So Ralph goes, Marquee value? Fucking Marquee, you want Marquee value? I'll give you Marquee value. I got a classic character. And they, they're all scared, right? Who is it, Ralph? Who's the classic character? And he thinks for five seconds, he goes, I own a uh, Mighty Mouth. So they go, okay, we'll buy it, we'll buy it, just calm down. So he races back to his studio and uh, tells his partner, which wasn't me after all, he says, quick. Find out who the fuck owns Mighty Mouth. I just sold it to CBS. So sure enough, they call around. They find out Viacom owns it, which also owns what you're looking at right now, this shirt. Um, he gets the rights to Mighty Mouse on the weekend. It calls me up again and says, Johnny, I need a studio. They think I got a studio. 
So I call up 35 of my friends who are all working at all the other studios in Hollywood, Hanna-Barbera, Filmation, uh, Disney, whatever. And they all hate their jobs, right? Because all cartoonists in the 80s hated their jobs. So they all quit. And the following Monday, we had a studio full of 35 people just from scratch. Judy Price shows up at the end of the week. We wrote all the stories over the weekend. <laughs> and uh, uh, Tom Minton, Jim Reardon, and I, and Eddie Fitzgerald, we all pitched the stories. Judy loved them, and we were off. We made The New Adventures of Mighty Mouse in 1987. Now, this was a historic event for animation because that was the first cartoon that um, had been done in about 30 years that was actually made by cartoonists because all the cartoons made in the 60s, 70s, and 80s were made by executives uh, you know, and weird pseudoscience and focus tests and market testing and all this weird crap. But the cartoonists had no say in what they were doing. It wasn't like the old days, like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and Tom and Jerry, where the cartoonists just made up everything and they didn't have to ask permission to do anything. Well, this was the closest that was in the 80s. Mighty Mouse was before The Simpsons, before Roger Rabbit, before Ren and Stimpy. This was the cartoon that really turned the tide and ushered in what they were calling in the 90s the, the renaissance of animation. And Ralph Bakshi is completely responsible for that because he kept the network people off our backs. He, he, would he had all these great techniques. We'd be showing the rushes on, on movieolas for the network executive. We'd come in and watch them to make sure that there were no dirty jokes or anything like that in it. And any time a dirty joke or something came up, Ralph would go, so how about that ball game the other day? And the guy would turn around and they'd start talking about baseball. Meanwhile, there's mm, going on in the curtain, all this stuff. <laughs> and we got away with it all. It was amazing. And a lot of the things that we did in Ren and Stimpy, I experimented with on Mighty Mouse. Uh, the um, domestic squabbles that, that Ren and uh, Stimpy always have. There was a cartoon in Mighty Mouse called uh, The Ice Goose Cometh, written by Tom Minton and I. And uh, they had a scene in there where Gandy Goose lives with Mighty Mouse. And it's very reminiscent of uh, Ren and Stimpy. In fact, if you watch any of those old New Adventures of Mighty Mouse cartoons, you'll see Ren and Stimpy stuff. You'll see not only Ren and Stimpy, but Tiny Toons and Roger Rabbit and tons of things that came later. That was the cartoon that just kind of started it all. Anyways, Ralph Bakshi, I'll get back to him here. He's such an amazing character. He, he's more of a cartoon than, um, than the best cartoon characters ever. He's, he's wackier than Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck or Ren or Stimpy. So I based this fire chief on him. And that cartoon, the, the original Fire Dogs, was really popular. I, I had tons of fan mail about it saying, make a sequel, make a sequel. So back in 91 or 2, I wrote a sequel called Fire Dogs 2. Pretty clever, huh? And uh, this time I decided I was, was going to make Ralph, the real Ralph, be the fire chief. Instead of loosely being based on him, it would really be Ralph Bakshi. So when we finally made the cartoon about three years ago, I called Ralph up and said, hey, Ralph. You know that Fire Dogs cartoon? And that was his favorite. He loved the Fire Chief. Um, so I said, well, how would you like to be the Fire Chief? Fucking right from there, Johnny. Let's go. So Ralph came down. We recorded him. And uh, he was great. So the new Fire Dogs has, is actually, now here's the weird part. We didn't write anything in the new Fire Dogs. It's a documentary. This is all culled from real life. These are experiences that I had with Ralph. So just Ren and Stimpy are me in the cartoon. And the fire chief is Ralph in his real life. Uh, these are absolutely factual. It's rotoscope, this cartoon. So anyway, it's also very gross. So if you don't like, uh, if you don't like um, poo jokes and stuff, you better not watch it. Maybe you should go and watch the dirty cartoon, watch Naked Beach Frenzy or something. But uh, it's very rude, this cartoon. But again, you know, I didn't make up any of it. And we had a lot of fun doing it. You're going to meet Jim Smith, hopefully. I'm going to try and get him over here. And he was um, one of the main guys on the new adventures of Mighty Mouse, and he knew Ralph really well, and he drew all the greatest scenes in this next cartoon. Fire Dogs 2!